Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I moved into my new dorm room, that's what this is. I think like a week ago or so now, I've made a video called I tried to remake a scene from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. In that video, I was like, let me know if you want to hear how I made one of the scenes in that video. And a bunch of you said that you were interested in seeing that, so here we are. I've decided to do this scene. It's not one of the most complicated ones, because there's only two different objects, so two different layers in it. Um, but I still think this will give you the basic understanding of how to do this without this tutorial being 50 years long. Let's get right into it. <laughs> I'm going to be using Premiere and Photoshop today. This is the raw clip. There's nothing, I didn't do anything to this clip. And the first thing we're gonna do is separate the color channels. Four copies basically on top of each other. It's not working. So in the Spider-Verse movie, because they were basing it off of comic book techniques, they decided to use CMYK instead of RGB. I don't know how to explain this easily. RGB is used for digital things and CMYK is used in traditional printing. When you're using a computer and you want to split the color channels, it's going to split RGB because it's a digital thing, right? So you have to kind of manually go in there and convert the RGB to CMYK. First of all, in order to split like the tones out of a clip, in Premiere you go over to the Effects tab and type in Arithmetic, and you drag it over to your clip, and then you scroll down and there's going to be all the different values. To figure out how to convert from RGB to CMYK, I just used an online converter. So go over to here, and I put uh, 255 and two of the things, you set the... Um, whatever this is, operator, to max. Then I just copy the arithmetic thing and paste it onto the next one, and I'll switch them around. Uh, let's just put that here, and then the last one. So there we go. Now it's set to CMYK instead of RGB. It kind of looks funny, you know? We don't, we don't want it to look blue. That's not the, the vibe we're going for. Another thing is the two bottom ones should be, you should use the color dodge effect. I'm forgetting what order they are in because I don't want it to be blue. I want mine to, yes. Okay, so it's the magenta one that I put on top out of all the clips so that it looks a little purple. The Spider-Verse theme, or at least my twist of the Spider-Verse theme, I was trying to put a lot of purples in there, a lot of like cyan, purple, it's supposed to be shot at night, so it just made a bit more sense. You know, that's constant throughout all the clips I used in this. And next, I'll go and I'll mess around with the clips a little bit. Normally I'll just make some of them bigger than others. You can make this look however you want, you know, there's no rules here. Okay, once you've got this clip distorted, all the color channels are distorted, I go and I export it. Um, because this is when we're gonna drop it into Photoshop. So you go into Photoshop and this is how it m probably will look. But this is what Roberto told me and it blew my mind. And go down to motion and then at the bottom it'll give you this like a video sequence editing thing and that's what you're gonna use. Add media. Well I'm just gonna take that thing I just exported. Don't look at my background, it's a mess. <laughs> It's fine. And now we just need to go in and add the different layers. So it might take some time to render. It's also not helping that my computer's not plugged in and has like three things running at the same time. First, I'll kind of divide this image into a 3D space, if that makes sense. So this one's only gonna have two. These ones like had like five or six. So you kind of just have to figure out what part of the image is moving in different ways and then cut it up. All the layers separately for each one so that they can track in their own little groups. But for this one, we're lucky because there's only two. There's the background and the subject. Let's start with the subject first. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is add in the highlights. I had to figure out how to use a couple different brushes for this. The highlight brush, I just used this one. Um, normally I'll like take the color itself of whatever I'm trying to highlight and just make it brighter. And then I'll kind of just go in and add them over. So I'll play a lot with the opacity because you don't want to make it too obvious, you know? Otherwise, that's just not good. But wh wherever there's like naturally highlights, I'll go in and just add some. I messed up. I have to go back to the beginning. It's better to start at the like on the first frame of your clip so that you can track it forward. That's what I had to keep reminding myself when I was making this video. 
is it's supposed to look kind of exaggerated. So now we're going to do the dots. And for that brush, I go all the way down to this one. In addition to the, the brush highlights we did earlier, I go in and put in these dots as well. And sometimes I think the edges are too strong, so I'll go in with this eraser brush and sort of just... And then finally, it's time for the hash marks. So this brush was the one that was the hardest for me to figure out. But basically, I go down to that same one I used earlier, and then go over here to brush settings, and in the texture panel, you go to this. So instead of dots, it makes lines. <laughs> And then you gotta go and switch the color to black, because this is for shadows, obviously. And voila, you have the line brush. So those are the three brushes I used, and now I'm just gonna go in, in the shadows and add them in. I'm doing this kind of loosely because, again, this whole image is going to be tracking together, so you kind of just have to keep in mind, like, what everything else is doing. You don't want to overlap with anything. And yeah, I mean, some of these you can't even really notice, but it's all about the details. <laughs> now if some of you guys go back and rewatch the or original video, you can look for some of this stuff. So once you finish those three things, I make them into their own little group. So now you have to go in and sort of track the positioning. This is the fun part. This is, this is the part where I got really annoyed because it would constantly just not listen to me. Kind of tricky sometimes to get it right and this is what instead of like individually going in keyframe by keyframe i figured out to do and it's a lot better so i'm not complaining it's a lot better than going in individually but it's still a pain <laughs> move all the highlights and stuff over to fit the final panel i don't think i need to i'm gonna make it turn a little bit too you can't really tell but i did just track um, the highlights there. So now I'm gonna go back in and this time we're gonna track the dots. This is very riveting content, isn't it? <laughs> it's, I might just speed this up because it's basically just the same thing. Okay, so I think I finished the figure portion and now just gotta do the same thing for the background. I didn't do any like color correction premiere with the color tabs or anything. Sometimes if I feel like I need to change something after this is all done when I've added in all the stuff, I'll do that, but most of the time I just like to add like the different colors in with the brushes and the different textures. We're going for a comic book look, so adding them in yourself achieves that a little bit easier. I mean, I don't even think I need to track the background for um, this clip because it's kind of just staying in the same spot. So now that I'm done um, in Photoshop, you go down here to export it. That's where I'm going to end because... I don't have anywhere to drop this into. I actually do like the colors like this, so I don't think I would even go and color grade them anymore in Premiere. So yeah, I hope you guys found this interesting, and I know most of you watching aren't planning on recreating this, but I hope um, some of the techniques I use in, in this video are helpful to you. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could edit an entire video in Photoshop. I think it works better for little clips like this that you just want to add different effects to. I hope you found this interesting. See you later this week with another new video. Bye!